Confessions of a Side Chick. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> a topic that is so hot, you know. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of women, a lot of guys can be side, you know, guys. Yeah, they can be side. But um, they think they're winning. That yeah. position is crazy. They think they're doing something. They're not winning. So you produced this play, wrote this play. What made you write it? And where did it come from? Where did it stem from? Like, did any, anything inspire? I mean, I guess from what you see today. So just tell me. So actually, back in about, uh, back in 2015, mm -hmm. I was in Target uh, in Largo. And um, I was, you know, in the aisle where you get deodorant and stuff like that. And I went around to the aisle where you get paper towels and stuff. And these two ladies was talking. And the one lady was kind of like your character. Okay. She was uh, telling her friend, girl, you done, lost your, you done lost your mind. Why are you wasting your time with him? Like, he a whole married man. What are you doing? And her response was, was just like, she was cool. Like, she was like... Girl, I'm good. He he got. Girl, he bought me a car. He paying my bills. Like my son tuition. Like he pays some of that. Like, girl, I'm good. I'm good. He ain't got camera all the time. And she was like, but that's dumb. Like, what? It, get your own dude. What you doing? She was so cool with it. And I'm sitting there listening. You know, ear hustling. Mm -hmm. So I walked over to him and I said, "Excuse me, I don't, I don't mean no harm, but I said I heard, I heard y'all conversation. I said you you actually good with being the other woman. You walked she, up." Yeah. <laughs> okay. And she was like, oh, she was like, I don't mind. It ain't bothering me. But they but they laughed because I was being nosy. Right. So I was like, oh, I, I just want to ask the question. I'm just, I just find that kind of odd that people are so really cool with that. You ain't got no reservations or nothing. You don't care about the other family. And she was like, that's on him. That ain't on me. Mm. I'm like, dang. So I walked away from her and I said to myself, man, this is a stage play right here. And... So I went on Facebook one day and I said, hey, have you ever been a side chick or you are the side chick? I want to hear your story. And people was um, emailing me stories and all kind of stuff like that. And I, I, I took a couple of stories and put them together to make this story. OK. Um, but it's amazing that, you know, this topic, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's definitely a great blessing that Pastor Batter wrote this book, Side Chickology, because he talks about so many great things. But it's amazing how this epidemic is so okay. Like nowadays, it's okay to be the other one. It's okay to just cheat. It's okay to do what you want to do, but nobody really remembers the covenant or the vows or, you know, our, our people that have gone before us, our grandparents and stuff like that, that was married for 62 years and 80 years and been married since they was 14. Yeah, they had ups and downs, but they stayed together. Now we living in this microwave society where as soon as we have a problem, we ready to run. Or I'm gonna be with somebody else. So, you know, I think this stage play and either Pass the Battle's book is, is something that's right on time. It's something to talk about. It's something to make somebody sit in the audience and say, mm, I gotta, oof, I, I gotta get myself together. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, I, and it's, just, it's just something that we need to discuss. Uh, like Pass the Battle said, to spot, put the spotlight on it. Yeah. To say, hey, stop doing that. Even in the church too, though, you know? I mean, cause like he said, he was just like, you know, we got, we have temptation too. And it's, it's hard. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, Especially yeah. when things coming as easy as a, as, as a push of a button yes, it is. or that's a right. slide in a DM there you go. or an instant messenger. And that's how you get an instant side chick it's or an instant dude. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, instant, so, instant something. So I'm always intrigued, like how, when when you write your plays, like you have to think of different characters. Like, how does that happen for you? What is that process for you? So I think I think of I think of uh, so I watch a lot of television. I watch a lot of movies. Um, you know, my, my wife always says you always watch the same movies over and over. I just I don't know what it is. I just do, but I see something different every time I watch something. Um, I watch people when I'm out and about. I look at man people's mannerisms. I look at. You know, or that, or that's a character right there, or that's a character right there. I look at my own family growing up, my aunts and uncles living up, growing up in Sea Pleasant, Maryland. Mm -hmm. They was characters. So when I think about a story, and I think about the characters in the story, I think about, I go through the story in my mind. You know, do, do they have a brother? Okay, they, of course they got a best friend. Um, okay, and they, they, you know, of course they got a gay best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, you know, because you know, my cousins. You know, they, they got, my female cousins, they got friends, they, they got gay best friends that's cool in the game, come to cookouts and all that, right? And I've been listening to them talk. They really be having conversations. Heck yeah. Girl talk, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So I, I wanted to put the cast, that, that, that Cassandra had those two best friends that's ride or die that got her back no matter what. We down with you. 
you know, you my girl, you my, you know what I'm saying? So then I wanted to put the element of, you know, her brother, he, her brother from the street, you know, uh, things like that, because you, you wanna you wanna put a cast together or characters together that flows with the story that makes it real to the audience. You, you don't wanna throw something together that's just like, what? You wanna make it real to the audience. So it's any, everybody in the audience can relate to a character, mm -hmm. even down to baby girl. Somebody can relate to baby girl, like, oh, that's my niece, oh my God, her mom. Everybody can relate. Everybody can relate to your character. Mm -hmm. Girl, that's Tanya right there. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, that's how I think about when I when I put characters in a story. I want each character to be relatable to the audience, to where it's real to them, mm -hmm. to where it touches them some kind of way, to where they want to fix something in their life. Yeah. When you gave me Tracy and I read over the script, I was just like, oh, okay, this is a little piece of me. This is like yeah. 75% me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. I thought about the Sunday's best, and I thought about yeah. you know we in the church and all. I said, but you know what? There was a Yanni. Before all of that. Before that. There was a Yanni that was singing in Listen Band. There was yeah, a Yanni that grew go. up in Southeast Washington, D.C. Yeah. that ran with 10 girls yeah. that experienced that with my girlfriends. You, you know go. what I'm saying? There you go. And not saying that I'm a saint or anything, but I always pride myself with, like, I'm not going to be nobody. Side nothing. That's like, right. I'm not about That's to right. do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. hustle hard. I mean, I had my first son at 17, my second son at 30. I didn't get the ring nor the man. But what I'm saying is, I'm not lowering my standards for nobody. Now, had I been in a situation where I did not know that I was the side chick, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to say that, yeah. and I'm going to be honest with that. But when I found out, it was immediate. Oh, no, nah, you're not about to play me like that. this. Like, That's I'm right. out. So, and then with my girlfriends, I hate to see them hurt. Or I hate to see them put themselves in a position where you just get material stuff from a dude, but you're still selling yourself short because you're not, you're not really getting And then you're hurting people's families. You're pulling them away from what they got at home. So that doesn't make the situation, you know, it, it's just not good. Not good so right, when you right. gave me that, I was just like, all right, so I'm about to be my fanny pack. Mouthpiece, yeah. ready to box, yeah. sister that I used to be, you yeah, know. You I pray for you, <laughs> but I cut you. But right, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And I'm and I'm very, I'm thorough about my friends. Like when I love my friends, I love yeah. my friends to the yeah. point. Me and my friends have fallen out because yeah, yeah. I say what I want to say, and it's not because. You know, it's not because I'm being dogmatic about it, but I love hard like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to see you go through that. Right, so I'm right. putting her into that. There you go. <laughs> see, that's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's, that's what I call realism. Mm -hmm. So that's what I call, you know, when I, when I coach actors and I teach actors and I, t and I talk to them about their character. And I, I, I try to explain to them and, and try to instill into them, um, you're not trying to be this person. You are this person. And the reason why I casted you because it's a little bit of this person is already in you for real. You you probably never seen it, so I'm gonna pull it out you. Mm -hmm. So now that makes it, when that, and that's why I tell people about method acting. You know, take a few days out of the week and just be your character all day long, mm -hmm. and watch how real it'll become to you. That way, when the audience see you, they say, "Oh, she played that. Oh, he played could. Man, I ain't know he could. I ain't know he was like that. Yeah. It's in you. Yeah, you just don't pull it out. Yeah." So I think with this show, when everybody come to see it, they will see characters they all can relate to. They will see characters that make them say, wow. Uh, they will see things that make them, when they leave the show, I want everybody to leave the show with a different mindset mm -hmm. about side chickology, yeah. about being a side person. I ain't gonna say side chick, being a side person, whether you're male or female. I want you to leave with a different aspect of, let me get my one and I'm good. Yeah, we may have problems and all of that, but we we got we got we got to pray, we got to work this thing out, um, because ain't nobody perfect. Yeah, we all we all coming from different backgrounds, different lifestyles. Mm -hmm. We think differently, we say things differently, we do things differently. But you, but but iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. and when that iron sharpens iron, you button heads and all that. After a while, the iron melts together and mends, mm -hmm. and there is no more none of that. So all that stuff you argued about when you first got together, you realize. That stuff don't bother you no more because you grew past it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I want to see people grow. I want to see people. Uh, I want to see our our uh, black marriages and relationships stay together. Stop trying to run. Don't don't get a problem and say, oh, I'm out. You know, I can go get somebody else to treat me better. No, you're not. He's going to be punching you in the head. Hello. He may got money. Yeah. And, and, and but he's he going to be the one that's going to be kicking you in the head when he make when he get mad at you. Then you be like, oh, I should have stayed where I was at. 
Yeah, it's an older days to say the grass is, uh, you may think the grass yeah, is greener on the other side, yeah. but you took care of this grass over here, you got to do the same with the, uh, the grass right. over here. You got to pluck the weeds, you got to rake right. it when the leaves fall, right. you got to water it, yeah. you got to make sure you put fertilizer on it. So yeah. it's the same grass, sir. This yeah. is why won't you do the work over here. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's why right. step over here? And then you got to take care of two lawns. Who wants to do that? You, do that? you spending more money on water. You spending more money on fertilizer. You know what I'm Trying saying? Trying to keep up with everything. Trying to keep up with everything. No. You, plant, you, you, you plant flowers over here, but then you putting an apple tree over here. Like, well, yeah, it's the same grass. I heard, I heard Pastor Battle say one time, one of his videos about relationships, mm -hmm. it's like a gas tank in the car. Mm. And you, you got this car that you love. You love your car. You don't want nothing going wrong with your car. And when your car is about to get on E, you go fill that tank back up with that premium gas. Your relationship is the same way. Your relationship has to stay whatever your partner's love language is. Mm. You need to be filling that thing up and keeping it full so it can keep on driving and going. When the some, yeah, the, some time the tanks do get empty. You, you get tired of each other. You Oh my God, you get on my nerves. But in those times, fill the tank back up. Yeah. And it'll it'll pass. Yeah. You know, so you know, it, it's it's just things that that, that I'm I, I hear him say all the time, and um, things that I'm looking at for myself. And, yeah. Um, Cause you're newly married. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I'm newly married. I'll be it'll be one year in September. Okay, congrats. Love my baby Felicia. Love yeah. You, baby. Love you, baby. She's so sweet. Oh, I love her to death. So it's 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 um it's a, it's that thing of I want people to come to this show, and I want people to. Think of it as don't don't think of confessions of a side chick or that's that's some raunchy show. No, this show has a story teachable that will teach you and that will touch your heart. Mm -hmm. And you will leave this show full of laughs, mm -hmm. full of love, full of joy, but you'll have a new mindset of knowing my worth. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if you got somebody that you love, hold on to them. Don't look for nothing extra. Do what you're doing with what you got. Yeah. Uh, love, with, love what you got and make it better what you got. Mm -hmm. And if you could do that, you could last a lifetime. Yeah. Um, and hey, that's just what I say, man. Confessions of a side chick. I wanted to teach somebody something. That's awesome, man. That's it. Well, you're teaching me, you hey, know? Come on here. I mean, what I already knew, I ain't, I ain't going to be Boy, no side chick. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. <yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> so we're glad to have you in the cage. Thank you for we're picking me. Thank you for choosing cast. me. We got some great people, yeah. man. Some funny people. Funny. We got some, man. It's this. I'm telling you, y'all do not want to miss this stage play. Nah. Uh, it is. It is amazing. It's off the chain. Yeah. If you do miss it, keep keep watching. We may bring it back around again. Yeah. But this is a good one, man. That you don't want to miss. Well written uh, by myself, Lavelle Long, and uh, Salahuddin Magdi. So uh, I'm telling you, man. You don't want to miss it. Um, it'll change your life. It will. I guarantee. All right. Confessions of a snatching. <laughs>